Welcome to Mishnah study. Masechet Kitlaim Perik Het Mishnah He. Over here in this Mishnah, we're going to discuss the same idea, the same theme of the animals, right? What's what's mutar and what's asur. Um, over here now, we're going to discuss though the animals that are asur and mutar with one another. We'll go through a list of them and we'll explain. A perutiyot asurot. Right? Perutiyot are a type of animal that's uh, a breed between a horse, some type of horse, and some type of donkey, um, and they are as asur, meaning what are they asur? So similarly, they are asur with one another, right? So, you know, it really begs the question, why are they asur with one another? Do we go according to the mom? Do we also go according to the dad? So Barthuna explains over here, and it seems like this is really what's going on, is that they are asur with one another because it's hard to differentiate between, you know, the you know if, if they came from the mom or from the dad, meaning they all look the same, and therefore they are asur with one another. Beharamach mutar. Beharamach is a type of also a type of uh, horse. And Abam says that he thinks that it's a wild horse. Right. So those are, are those are all. The ramach is mutar, right? Mutar with one another. Adnasade. Um, What's adnasade? So it's it seems like the way Abam explains it is some type of you know mythological figure. Um, it's, it's a, he first he explains that it's an animal that's you know similar to a man. Um, they say in, in in certain books that he uh, loves to talk. He doesn't shut up. He uh, his speech is like the speech of a person. Um, he gives the Arabic name for it, and the Arabic name he gives is actually what they use for a monkey today. Uh, but uh, Bar, uh, Kapach points out that in Harambam's time. That Arabic that Arabic word was used for a more mythological figure. Um, so that's a uh, Sadeh, that's considered a haya. Okay. Why is that so important? We'll get to that in a moment. Um, actually, he's going to mention it in the next Mishnah. But if it's a haya, right, then it, for we could say if he's you know selling something and he says I'm selling you know all the hayot in my in my possession then you know is this included is it not included so this is considered a haya. The bio selmer mitameot be ohel ke adam. It's mitame in a in an ohel right. If someone dies in a tent right, then everybody in that tent becomes asur. Everyone underneath that same uh, ceiling becomes becomes tame. So over here, Rabbi Yosef says that this anyasade has the same tuma of a person. The same way if a person dies in a tent, every everything in that tent becomes tameh. So too, if this anyasade dies in a tent, we consider him like a person in that regard, according to Rabbi Yosef. Halachado is not like Rabbi Yosef. Hakupad vechudata sinaim. Kupad is a uh, porcupine. Chudata sinaim is a, uh, I believe it's a weasel. So these are types of haya. These are types of Again, animals, haya, as opposed to behema, haya, also as opposed, opposed to a uh, sheretz, right? We're calling this a haya. Chudat sinayim, Rabbi Yosei Omer, Bet Shammai Omrim Mitamea Kazait Masa V'chada Shabba Maga. Right, so now when it comes to the Chudat sinayim, so Rabbi Yosei says that Bet Shammai, according to Bet Shammai, it's Mitame Kazait Masa, right? At the size of an olive, it's Mitame if you're carrying it, not you don't have to be touching it. It's enough to be carrying it, and the size of a lentil if you touch it. Now, what is this exactly talking about? It's a little bit of background. In general, when it comes to tuman tahara, we need to know that there are the eight shiratsim, right? There are four the eight shiratsim, uh, you know, the the chole, the achbar, the mice, you know, all these different types of eight, um, you know, again, little. Um, small little creatures, right? That's what they are. There are eight of them that are mentioned in the Torah, and these are the Shiratsim. Now, these Shiratsim are only, you only become Tameh for them if you touch them, right? When they're dead, of course, right? If you touch them when they're dead, then you become Tameh. Um, now, when it comes to a, uh, a real, a, a bigger animal, a corpse of a, uh, a lion, Right, so or an animal that just died, right? That is mitame, of course, if you touch it, right? Um, now, if you touch it, it's mitame in a much bigger size than the uh, the, the shratim. If you touch this uh, dead corpse of a, of a of an animal, right? Then it, if you, you need to touch something that's the size of a kazait. Whereas if you touch, when it comes to the Shemona Shratzim, if you touch something with the size of a size of a, a, a lentil, you would become Tameh. 
right? So there's a certain humra when it comes to touching the corpse of a of an animal. Now I would just point out though that there is so there's there's a certain right so there's a certain humra when it comes to touching the shmuna um, shiratzim where you only you become tamir even at the size of a lentil right and it doesn't have to be the size of a um, a kazait like uh, a, a larger animal. Now let's say when it comes to masa tumat masa was tumat masa if you're not touching it let's say you're just bearing the load. Right there's a I don't know you're carrying a, you know a bunch of towels and then on top of all those towels on your shoulder you have this uh, you know um, one of one of these uh, dead mice you know dead mouse on top of you so if you have this on top of you if it was a you know a dead bear on top of you you would become tamid because you're bearing the weight of that dead animal but let's say it's a mouse and right? it's not you're not touching it you're just bearing the weight. You won't become tamir from it. So there's a certain humra that comes to when it comes with a nevela when it comes to a dead corpse. So over here, Rabbi says saying that according to Bet Shammai, he's taking both humrot. He's saying that this chudat sinaim, we're going to make it tamir in a kazait bemasa, right? That it's going to be tamir even if you you know if you're bearing the weight, meaning we're treating it like a nivela, we're treating it like a dead animal. Like a dead, like a dead bear or a dead lion, whatever it may be, and ka'adasha b'maga. Also, if you touch it and you only touch the size of a lentil, right? It doesn't have to be the size of a kazait. It right? That's that's the humna of the shmona shratzim. You're going to be tameh once you touch it. Halacha is not like Rabbi Yosef in either of the statements.